welcome all of you guys to the third installment here tonight of our coach development program. We have with us tonight we have Alex Mandalitas, currently the assistant coach of the men's hockey program at Mount Royal University. Previously, uh, has assistant coached with the uh, in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. He's been a head coach with the U18 AAA programs within the Alberta Elite Hockey League, and via the Team Alberta program has coached. Uh, with the Canada Winter Games and the WHL Cup. So with that, I am going to pass it over to Alex. A uh, little bit of housekeeping first off. If there's any questions, please toss it into the question and answer and or chat. I will be monitoring it. And as we get going through it, um, I, you know, once Alex has done his presentation, we will get to the questions. So without further ado, Alex, here you are, my friend. Have at her. Perfect. Thanks for that um, introduction there, Patty. Great chatting with you beforehand. I'd like to thank Hockey Alberta for asking me to help out with uh, with this. Always fun to, to give back and, and um, talk about hockey. So um, also want to thank the coaches for making the um, um, making the, making their time available to hang out here and um, be part of this uh, this evening. We'll, we are going to be talking about um, technology and you can imagine you know it's great when it works and then when it doesn't it's uh it it, it puts you it, it puts your problem solving skills to the test so um when we first did our dry run here just a little bit of a backstory here we did our dry run and uh none of the videos worked so i apologize for that but uh, i got some screenshots and i'll definitely be able to talk with through the content but um that's it i think uh the joke is if you've used steven it hasn't crashed in the middle of a period have you even really used technology? So um, we're going to pivot and we're going to do the best that we can, but I really appreciate you guys uh, and everyone being on the call. And uh, hopefully uh, there's some good questions or good dialogue and we can um, help out with uh, what, what technology is and how we use it at the university level. So, so today's agenda, just give a brief background of myself. Um, we're going to define what technology is. Uh, it seems like it's a, a lot of it is digital and video, but there's other elements that we can use. I'm going to share my uh, tech toolkit that I've um, developed over the years, um, the application to hockey and what it's all about, the qualitative and quantitative analysis that we get from it, and technology and action resources, and then some key takeaways. And like I said, hopefully some Q&A afterwards. So a little bit about myself, uh, like Patty alluded to, uh, I've been kind of wearing a lot of hats throughout the, the coaching world in Alberta. I started out in uh, U, U15AA. I got to get used to the, the new naming, but um, it was just my one of my buddies uh, was offered a team and you know I was fresh back from university and I didn't really know what to do. I know I, I played played junior in AGHL and um, thought, saw an opportunity to, to hang out with my buddies. So picked up the whistle and, you know, as you can see on this uh, on this timeline, kind of jumped in, did some of the things that was required. And that's what I thought it was, was just like the, the development was, was a requirement. But it wasn't until, I, I just want to, I'm not going to go through every single team, but it wasn't until kind of 2016 when I started taking hockey and coaching and teaching way more seriously. I wanted more information. I couldn't get enough. And that was kind of the start of when I when I enrolled with my uh, high performance one um, and then I completed it but I had to do a rewrite so um, again once I got that kind of um, um, light bulb moment and realized that no like I got to put some more effort into here as you can see all the different things that that came afterwards right um, head coach at Alberta Cup for four four different teams um, which led to the video coach of the U16 team at the WHL Cup, with which turned into a coach mentor position with Hockey Alberta and the Alberta Cup, and then um, went to uh, the Canada Winter Games as a video coach, and um, you know, again as a one of the assistant coach for the U16 program this year, which then turned to uh, the Pursuit of Excellence seminar as a guest coach with the U17. So. Um, it really it, it's kind of putting yourself in those situations it's it's wanting to learn more and becoming the best coach that you can be right we ask the players to do the exact same thing so i think it's important for us as coaches 
to to sit on these calls and and i'm like you guys i'm I, i'm always looking for new information and new ways of doing things so um you know you got to kind of put your money where your mouth is at times so what is technology and technology is is a knowledge put into the practical use to solve problems it's it's the objectives it's so how do we find solutions and there's six major categories to technology and where hockey falls into is the communication side right and so everything that we're doing we're trying to communicate we're communicating ideas we're breaking down video which communicates our skill uh, deficiency or efficiencies right so and then taking that information and then communicating it to the players or to the other staff members so again right all the tools that we're using we're communicating in a sense so developing those skills are just as important we won't dive into effective communication uh, i will keep it to the technology side of things but just keep that in the back of your mind that um, we use these tools uh, to better communicate right we still need an operator and our operation system is ourselves right whether it's a video camera or an application on your phone or a steva a game breaker or something like that we still have to have the eye um, to, to break it down and put it into context. So um, technology and hockey is changing, right? And so we can see on the on the top um, screen with the St. Louis Blues, right? The players have access to iPads on the bench. We use them as well. Uh, it's one of our big features in between periods. Um, we have two of them, I think almost three of them actually. And, you know, the head coach has his where he's looking for specific things in terms of face off uh, alignments, how successful are we? Do we have to make any adjustments and power play and PK? Whereas, you know, as a forward coach, I'm looking at my zone entries and zone exits, right? To see how efficient we are there. And then the defensive coach is looking for um, specific things in terms of his um, game plan and strategy. So um, last year we were fortunate to travel to the States and we played against the the golden gophers so i just have a big uh, picture of their theater room and you know it's pretty cozy and that that m is everywhere which is pretty awesome so again i i like this video because or the, that, that picture because it communicates what technology can be not just from a moving picture in a digital standpoint right um a picture of winning a championship um the logo everywhere so you have pride in your organization right i don't i know not all the coaches have access to their own dressing room but how can you make that right the room to be right whether it's bringing in posters or motivational quotes uh, that you can post in the dressing room and then ultimately right like using the laptops and, and getting used to those things I, and I have to share the story when I when I first um I wasn't really I, I used Steva for one year um but it wasn't until you know getting involved with uh, the WHL Cup and working with other staff members and they're so eager to help and uh, to assist in things and sometimes being a little vulnerable opens up and, and gets us out of our comfort zone. So the application of, of technology, we obviously use it for game breakdown. It's our best tool, right? How do we evaluate our performance? We have to go back and look, right? In a game, we might just get still images. We might be coaching to a player and we miss a, a big shift or, uh, or something that happens. So we need to go back and watch. And we have to have that objective eye. So it, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a later slide, but that, that game breakdown, it has to happen. Um, especially if you want to be, um, you want to get better as a coach, you need to see more, right? The more you see, the more you pick up, right? The picture goes from the microscope to a very complex picture, right? So we want to see the foreground. We want to see the background. We want to see all that detail. And that's what the game breakdown will, will provide. Right? we'll see nuances we'll see patterns that continue to come up right and then that leads into our player development so we're assessing our skill base right and, you know for us it happens very fast so we need guys that have good edges on the penalty kill so you know when you're watching that we're like okay that's that's something that we need to take into a practice so that we can develop those skill set so that we can be more effective right but we're looking at our analytics right let's say our stats from last year you know, we had a pretty good year, but we'd like to shed about 10 to 15 more goals against on average or the goals against from the season. So how do we do that? Right. It's easy to do, but it's basically we need to eliminate more goals on the PK and more goals five on five in our own zone. So that's where we're going to team up. from a team development standpoint. Right. This is where 
you can really reinforce your team identity. What do you stand for? What do you play for? What do you, what does success look like? So um, line identity drill or, um, of clips that you want to show. Um, we have a, um, a task that we have cougar hockey versus not cougar hockey. What does it look like, right? Our, our mentality, our, our imagery, our words and phrases that we use, we want to demonstrate that on the ice. And so we'll pull those clips so that we can reinforce the habit and then obviously pull the clips where, you know, we need to be a little bit better here, guys. And then the last one is the personal growth. So what are you doing for yourself? How are you adding to your toolkit and toolbox to be, be the best coach that you can be? So probably four facets that we're going to spend quite a bit of time, but here's my tech toolkit, right? The amount of technology that's out there, um, it's immense. We can access information 24 seven, right? Um, getting a, and, and a lot of it's free. Obviously there's some things that you have to pay for, but it's worth the investment that I'll get to in the growth side at the bottom of the slide here. But, uh, you know, I signed up for uh, a Calgary public library card and I spend a lot of time online, um, with, um, um, audio books, right. And, and different resources that they have movies, books, I, you know, you're just trying to find ways to find that edge. There's success leaves clues and there's clues all over the place. Sometimes we just have to get out of our own way to look and find them. Google, obviously the NHL webinars, um, what an immense re uh, resource to, to be able to, um, to sign up for and, and see what the NHL coaches are doing. Um, you kind of watch enough of them, especially through the, the coaches site and their summit that they had and there's the Roger Nielsen coaching clinic. It really comes back to, um, you know, and that's why I thank Hockey Alberta for this is, is you know, wearing the hat yourself and having to provide the information. So it requires you to, to do the research, right? To put the presentation together, to kind of put uh, your thoughts into words and present it and have it critiqued by other people, right? It's, it's easy to watch and see, but no different than the players we have to do, right? We have to act on what we believe in and, and find ways to, to improve. So I mean, and then communication is huge, right? You're trying to build a relationship with your players, uh, especially with uh, the time that we're in now with, with the pandemic and COVID. Um, using Zoom like this to, to communicate and, and connect with various coaches, but even using it for player development. Um, I have a player with, uh, with the academy that I work at and um, we wanted to go, he wanted me to go over his, um, his video from his tryout at one of the AJ teams. So we sat down on video, I shared my screen and we broke down his shifts and we, you know, had a good session. And, you know, he wants to do that now that he plays uh, um, uh, U18 AAA in the city. So it's just a, a great resource. Obviously it takes up time, but again, worth building the relationship. Uh, connecting with your players um, through text messages. It's funny how some players take time to warm up, but, you know, again, over the pandemic and obviously not uh, being canceled with U sports and you want to connect with your players you want to get in touch with them you want to see how they're feeling we have one player that hates talking on the phone right but we connected on a tv show and i asked him how he was doing if he was caught up and then within five minutes he's calling me back wanting to talk and i couldn't get him off the phone for 20 minutes so here i am trying to i'm leaving five different voicemails for him all through the summer trying to connect he only wanted to text and here we we finally had a breakthrough and were able to talk on the phone. So um, Google Drive, another one, you know, great, um, great resource to have. I like to keep track of the conversations I have with my players uh, just so that I'm not repeating things. I'm not asking them the same question. I'm not asking them, oh, yeah, how'd that test go, right? Well, that test was two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, how'd you do? It's like, well, I already told you I got this. And so it, it just again you want to be authentic and genuine so keeping track of what you're what you're saying the conversations you're having and then just trying to touch base with them every week on a personal level right where you're not just talking honking you're seeing how you're doing and, and again that mental health side and checkup is, is so valuable and then we get to the engagement side so i've invested in um, a software called Movavi or Movavi or how do you pronounce it it's a great tool for me uh, I can pull, pull clips from um, YouTube, I can edit them, I can create uh, highlight videos, which I'll, which I'll get to. Uh, we also have, um, we're a Google school, so we have a lot of um, our, um, our apps are Google. So Slido is a plugin that you can get for PowerPoint presentations. And it's a live code that the players can access on their phones. And so if we need to gather 
information from them, like how they're feeling, how they think about the game, what words would you describe? And it just like an instant feedback so we can see where their head's at, right? Rather than us guess, uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great tool to have. Same thing with the, the Google Forms, we'll create uh, questionnaires and they'll answer and we'll get some immediate feedback just to help out and that's the Google, Google Classroom. As well as uh, Adobe software, I have Photoshop and Illustrator and I can create graphics. And you know, like when I was with the Mustangs and kind of a joke there with, with some of the coaches when they found out I was doing effective technology, they're like, we don't even use technology, but the fact is, is it's everywhere you're using it already. But um, you know the players appreciate it when you know like they like to see the notoriety, they like to be recognized. So if you can make something special, and it's not just Adobe, you don't have to invest in in that software. Um, I actually did this whole presentation in PowerPoint and Canva. It's a free uh, marketing tool, so something that you guys can do. And then and then the teaching side, like getting used to breaking down video. The the thought of a video coach everyone's a video coach like everyone's a hockey coach and I really have to thank the the staffs that I've worked with that that when I was the video coach they didn't include me as one of their coaches I was leading drills and practices and I think that's just so valuable and you see the NHL coaches they're using video just as much as their video coaches so uh, getting used to that software getting used to how to break it down how to create reels how to create um, uh, videos so that you can enhance um, teaching is so important. And then the growth side of things, right? Uh, investing in the athletic because they have some great articles on hockey and analytics. The Glass and Out podcast, whenever I'm in my truck, I just want to listen and, and grab some more things. And then uh, the coaches site. So a lot of cool things that you guys can find and kind of sink your teeth in. But really, like I said before, any tool is great, but it can definitely collect dust if we're not practicing and using it. So here's kind of a, a week at a glance on, on us. So you know, I'll start Monday to Sunday, and Monday is our review of the game objectives. So we have seven game objectives that we're trying to hit every single game, and so we'll review that. That'll be the number one thing on Monday. So we'll use Google Sheets, and I actually saw um, one of my former assistants, Kyle, actually still use the spreadsheet that he made. So if you have an accountant on your staff or you know anyone that's a wizard with uh, spreadsheets and Excel, definitely... Uh, Definitely use their skill set and then borrow and and it's it's awesome. So I keep track of, like I said, our zone entries and our exits and and um, scoring chances and I plot it so that the players can see it. So again, using analytics to our advantage. But we'll use bid swap. We'll use but YouTube clips. Like a lot of times we we won't reference the game just yet. We might tie it into another lesson. It's all about you know what your what your key pillars are for your team. We have four that we want to hit on and being a good student athlete and being a steward to the community is one of them. So we spend a lot of time on Mondays kind of reverting to that as well and planting seeds on what it means to be a great student athlete. And then uh, Tuesdays is our kind of cougar versus not cougar hockey. So we find clips where we exemplify what it meant, like how did we follow our game plan? How did we execute on our game objectives? And then the other clips that kind of went away with it. And I think it's like, it, you have to have that honesty. It's not to berate or single out players, but if you can't be um, open to your performance and look at it objectively, then we're, we're gonna struggle with getting better. Wednesday is when we start doing our line meetings. So you pull clips and you create, um, you know, line identity, uh, things that you wanna discuss and bring up, you know, some things that probably went well, some things that probably didn't, right? And so, you know, reviewing kind of the team concepts, uh, systems, and, and just kind of rating our execution. And a lot of the time it's getting, asking them questions on what they see and they like it too. They like the dialogue because now they're, oh, you're totally open there. I didn't think you were. And then, you know, again, now they're processing the, uh, the video and, and making decisions on their own. So it's quite fun to, to see what they see. So in those meetings, I'll, I'll, I'll find our clips, but I'll also use whether it's AHL clips or NHL clips or any type of clips that I can show. Sometimes it's uh, it's fun, different things like from movies. I like I like movies and the and and music. Try to tie it together where it's just you know making it last. Like you want the you want the input to last. You want it to not just go through one year and out the other. So I'll use a lot of those things. And then Thursdays when I try to get into like the one on ones where I want to sit down one on one with players, it's kind of giving them a week of practice. We've had some talks and then just kind of build them up for the weekend. 
And again, this is where you, that uh, Google sheet of, of player communication is so important. So you're not constantly talking with the same one, right? You're mixing up and you're making sure that you're, you're catching everyone. And Friday is our opposition breakdown. So we kind of do that sometimes Thursday and Friday where we're kind of planting seeds on who we're playing next. So again, as a, as a coach, as an assistant coach, you're also looking at the opposition. It's not just the head coach, right? So line matchups, how good their centermans are, what hands they are, what do they do for their power play? What do they do for their PK? Because, you know, those are the, those are the aspects of the game that you're going to have um, some success or you're going to have some failures. So again, um, making sure that's done and that's on a Friday morning, whether we're on the road or, or um, at home. And then Saturday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday are busy days, right? So the game happens at 7 7 o'clock. Immediately after, it gets uploaded to our vid swap where everyone on um, uh, U Sports uses it and we're breaking it down. So it, uh, each coach has kind of its own way of, of doing it. I like to wake up early the next day and do all my video clipping that, uh, that morning. So I guess the, the limitations of vid swap is we can't clip it and code it in real time. So we have to wait for the AI equipment to process it. And it, it's pretty accurate, although um, similar to probably other coaches using different things like huddle or crossover or um, iceberg, it's not as accurate. You still have to kind of sift through it with your own comb and omit the things that uh, you don't want. Because sometimes even just talking with some of the coaches, they'll spit out some crazy stats and numbers, but we have to tweak that. Again, we have to use our eye um, to make sure that it adds up. But those are the busy days. And then Sunday is kind of the day where you kind of regroup and, and you look at everything as a whole for the weekend, but that's also the growth development. We have Sundays off. So that's when, again, I'll, I'll pull up a, another webinar that I've recorded or that I've found or saved, and I'll watch that and just take some notes. Um, just, again, just trying to stay sharp and then see if I can find any tidbits that I can share with the, kid, uh, the players uh, so that we're exceeding as best we can. Right, so video again is a great context or a, a tool, but it, it, we have to look at it in context, right? And so our qualitative analysis, right? So our subjective on what we think and what we feel versus the objective. So I'm not gonna read all of those things, but it's very, you have to get both sides. And what I mean by that is the strengths you use knowledge and experience and your expert of, uh, observer. So how do you become an expert observer? Well, you have to watch lots and you have to analyze it a lot. You have to break it down. You have to challenge yourself. You have to challenge the way you think. Right? One of the cool things is that I was in Chicago and Barry Trotz challenged all the coaches and saying that face-offs actually doesn't correlate to more wins. Right. And so everyone kind of scratched their head being like, well, face-offs are important. It's like, well, I didn't say that they were not important. It's just that the correlation between being over 50% in the face-off circle and winning hockey games, it doesn't match. There's too much data and events in between. So again, you know, you're looking deeper at it. If you're an offensive zone face-off, does it lead to more scoring chances or shots on goal? And that's probably more accurate. Then you're getting into regression stats. And um, I don't have an apartment like that. Maybe I have to recruit Kyle to help me break that stuff down. But um, but again, like you're, you're trying to find um, reason and purpose to do things better, right? And so what I, what I mean by that is, so here's a, a goal map of all of our five on five goals from last year. Uh, on a, at an initial look, it, wow, like we're buzzing, we're buzzing inside the, the scoring area, we're getting inside the house, we're, we're scoring some meat and potatoes goals. It looks like, you know, probably heavy on a stick, but that's me putting some biases on it. That's me being, qualitative. I haven't looked at the data quite yet, right? So I have to break it down even further. It only gives me part of the, the story. So when I looked at it, right? And so I took this from um, the coach's site. I, I apologize. I got to reference the coach because he did the work. But on the on the right-hand side is the, the average of goals where, that are scored in the NHL, right? And so you kind of see where our goals are scored. We're very good in the pass across the Royal Road and possession across the Royal Road. So essentially we're scoring some pretty nice goals, right? But then the area that really stood out to me was the 4.3 screenshots and 11 points or the 7.2 deflection. So it tells me that, or starts, I started asking the questions like, well, why is that, right? Like, are we not getting to the net front? Are we not screening? Are we not creating secondary chances and that sort of thing. So that's kind of like, okay, now you watch all the, all the clips and 
you notice that you're right, we're not very good at screen. So what a great opportunity to develop that skill, right? So what does it entail, right? It takes um, taking the goalie's eyes away. So you can see in this bottom picture right here, right? Goalie has plain sight view on that puck, right? So we have to do a better job of lining up on the puck, taking away the goalie's eyes. A, it gives our, because right now, there's almost two goalies in this shot, right? Where's the shooter going to shoot? He's just going to throw the puck on net and hope for the best. Whereas if he's taking away his eyes, he's directly in front of the goalie. That's probably going to open up um, some, some space on the left-hand side uh, of the net, right? So again, it's, it's shooting through screens as well. So you can see the top here with the uh, green arrow. They're using um, this defender as a screen. There's a multi-layered screen here. Uh, same thing with the, the Tampa Bay Lightning shooting on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And so I picked up some clips as well. And I apologize, this is where the video component would have been great, but um, we'll have to make do with the screenshots. Uh, but again, it's just getting to the net with traffic, right? Get to the front of the net. We were too perimeter. And, you know, we kind of equate that to our early exit, right? And so we needed to be a little bit more meat and potatoes heavy on sticks. And so that's been a focus so far with uh with our practices is getting a little bit tougher in those areas right and then um so that was from um just kind of an assessment of our analytics and our stats right but then again how do you develop the team concept right and so blocking shots i took this one from when i was with uh, the canada winter games team and so you can see at the top right it's adam sandler in the the batting cage and we wanted our guys to be one knee committed to blocking shots. So again, using some comedy, using some humor, played him the clip, and then it broke to Max Domi in the World Juniors when he was just, just a like a lightning bug out there, just blocking shots, just one knee committed, wearing pucks. And they, like there was one shift that we had that where he put up, put his body in front of three pucks. And so not the biggest guy. And again, so a way to communicate. To the players through comedy because everyone's seen the Adam Sandler where he steps in front of the, the the baseballs. So it shows some grit, shows some eagerness to get in front of pucks and just you know play that meat and potato game. And you know we almost got there, but but Barry will share share a story about the girls team and how you know the pictures after all all the girls were had massive bruises on on their bodies because that's how committed they were. So um, we tried to get our guys to buy into that. We 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 were successful in a bronze medal, but um, you know, again, trying trying to sell sell the point um, in, in what it means to be one knee committed, how to how to block shots, keep the puck out of our net. From a player development standpoint, like we're breaking down skill. Uh, this one I put together a nice little highlight reel for for some of our guys. You know, again, they like to know that we care. They like to know that. Um, so it's not always beating them up. It's sometimes pumping them up as well. Um, and it's not blowing smoke. It's 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 goals that they've scored that are really nice. Like the one that I did, it was um, it was supposed to be a condensed version version of uh, Riley Lindgren's highlight reel. And, you know, he's been part of big goals for us last year. He, he helped assist uh, on the game tying goal with 1.1 seconds to, to force overtime against UBC in game three. Unfortunately, we end up losing that. But again, the heroics there. And he scores the game winner in our um, dome game against the Dinos. So he's He's, he's a great player and you kind of want to highlight some of his big moments um, through the throughout the year. And so now it's kind of getting the ball rolling of, you know, let's do that with all the forward group, because again, you know, we're not really playing right now. We've got a little bit more time on our hands. We can kind of pump them up. Um, we can be the good guys for once because we're not making lineup decisions. So here's a good opportunity to build relationships with them. Right. So again, and then, then the personal growth side of things and, you know, so much respect for what a, what a lot of guys are doing in the hockey world, but Adam Oates especially, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, uh, heard it. I just got a little clip on it, but it's a great reminder of what we are doing and how we are doing it. And it, it does it transfer into the game. Are we seeing the success, right? And so, you know, even when we do the stats and analytics on practice and you know, how many shots are our guys getting? Are they purposeful? Do they realize that they shouldn't be just going through the motions? We want to see them kind of embrace their development as well. You know, especially at the U sports level, we have some guys that are, you know, going to play pro hockey and we want them when they step in to be a difference maker. That's what our program is trying to provide um, to our players is that it's a, it's a, it's a next step for them. So, um, 
helping them recognize that, that, you know, again, four practices a week can get pretty mundane and pretty monotonous with some guys. So again, how can we make it more engaging for them? How can we um, help them with their skill development? And that's on us as coaches to make an inventory of skills that um, that we need to focus on every player and kind of encouraging guys to stick around after practice. We give our guys ample amount of time um, to work on those those skills, of individual skills that they want to get to. But good good uh, reinforcement for for us as, as as coaches. I would say that my biggest frustration out there when I watch, you know, when the rinks I go to, when I watch other practices, when I watch other sort of drills or skills people, or you go on Instagram and you watch all the skills people. The one thing that I would please ask everybody to think about is when you design a drill, you have to have in mind what is the hockey play in that drill? Where would a player's eyes be looking? Where would the puck be? What direction is he going? So I think that's so big because sometimes we get stuck in just movement and activity is achievement but it's not like it's purposeful it's got to be where's that outcome right and so you look at some of the stats from hockey and you know it's an ugly game right there's the puck changes possession 400 times in a game so if it's changing 400 times in a game are we help like there's probably puck retrievals and puck steals that are happening quite often are we working on those skills are we working on a player with, are we starting our players always with the puck or are we starting them without the puck, right? So again, it's just kind of getting to those little things where it makes a huge difference in developing our guys. Um, you know, again, back to the, the shots, like, you know, again, we, we were working on, we, we use our time to kind of go back to hockey school stuff and work on fundamentals, skating, edging, um, shooting all those different things that we can do because right now we're not playing. So there's, there's a great opportunity for us to, to go back to those skills and help the guys develop and be stronger and better on those um, deficiencies. And, you know, again, you still ask the players and their knowledge of the game sometimes is uh, wavers a little bit and is a little bit different than what we know. Uh, you ask them like how on average, how many, like you look at a 40 to 50 goal score in the NHL, how many shots on goal are they getting per game? And, you know, like they always equate, more, 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 right? But really it's like 3.4 to 3.6 is what they're doing. So they're taking advantage of their shots. Are we taking advantage of our shots? Are we shooting game shooting in practice? Or are we have coming in, you know, dusting it off a little bit, throwing it on net, feeling good, right? So again, being mindful of that, holding guys accountable um, and making sure that the drills that we're doing, the skills development that we're doing is transferring into a game so that they can have success. So again, just always those, personal growth opportunities where, where we're looking for different ways of doing things. We're challenging what we do. So are we providing more experience? Or are we providing the same experience over, right? So I've been coaching for 12 years and I want to provide a different experience, a better experience every single year, not the same experience that worked five years ago, right? So again, you're, you know, there's some overlap and there's some things that lead to success, but again, we're finding different ways to communicate, especially with today's um, athletes. So free resources, uh, there's plenty out there, right? So uh, from stat tracking, right? I know Patty and I were talking um, offline a little bit, you know, they have access to Instat, which is just a phenomenal resource, but um, it might be out of your budget. So here are some things that you can add right into your toolkit. And like I was talking about the, the, I, or the iTrack app, uh, it's pretty simple to do. You can use an iPad and, you know, have a parent or, or anyone in the stands, uh, a player or, or anyone keeping track of just some basic things, right? So that helped play into your game objectives, your performance indicators um, and, and different ways of uh, accumulating and, and, and having the stats on hand. YouTube, um, I used to have like a, a, a massive external hard drive that carried around all these things and it was clunky and it was, it, I mean, it's clunky, but it was great until I dropped it one too many times and now all the files are less locked and, and I don't know if you've had anyone built with a, a data recovery company, but they're basically holding your information at ransom to pay a stupid amount of money to get the gigabytes back. So anyway, I, um, I, I started my own, I, I don't have my own YouTube, YouTube channel, but I signed up for my own YouTube channel and I can just save videos to that and make playlists and curate 
a whole bunch of different things, right? So whether it's skill development, whether it's a webinar that's online, whether it's anything that I can easily access and save for later or download that I want to show a player or, or work from, but it just kind of keeps things in, in an organized way, right? So um, a, an excellent resource that I would recommend for coaches to do so that you just have not just hockey clips, but like maybe uh, movie video, uh, videos and scenes that are motivational, that hammer home a point, like, you know, rereading Phil Jackson's book on, you know, like it was what um, one of the playoff series and he referenced um, the Wizard of Oz and all the guys are scratching their head and he just went like through this, you know, random way and uh, roundabout way to get to his point. So again, just using imagery to your advantage. Again, the Google Drive, iMovie, if you want to create some reels and some clips, um, if you if you don't have any of the game breaker or um, um, game breakdown such. Zoom, like I said, podcasts, right? It's fun when uh, new podcasts come out. Uh, again, queue them up when I'm in the truck or, or, or have some downtime that I'm able to listen to it. Canva is that app that I was talking about with the marketing. Coursera as well. Right, we forget that sometimes it's it's more than just hockey skills. It's our leadership skills. It's our emotional intelligence, um, our empathy, uh, behavior, uh, anything that we can do to help better. Like we wear a lot of hats throughout the hockey season. You know, even just doing some of these NCCP clinics, I think we overload some of the coaches and overwhelm them. They're like, oh man, I I didn't know I got into this. And it's like, yeah, this is what it all all entails because coaching is an extension of teaching and we, we, we need to equip ourselves with the best way to teach and we need to help our players learn, right? So iMessage, Google Meets, Hangouts Classroom, Hockey Alberta, uh, Coaches Eye, the Public Eye Library, all of those things are just so great to use. And again, it's like anything, you have to get used to it. You have to find what works for you. It's not for everyone. Uh, maybe you guys have different things that you guys use, right? But it's really just trying to implement it every single day and have a schedule on how you're deploying it and how you're using it so um be ready for thunderbolts as they say like like i said today with uh, the lack of videos it would have been great to show some of those clips but um hopefully we pivoted and and we got some inf good information for you guys about how to use technology and what it all entails and you know it's more than just the digital and the video there's there's the the key messaging the the team identity the and the quotes that you can post in the dressing room it's the whole experience because again what are we we're coaching people first right and then you look at the athlete athlete and the, and the hockey player and then last the hockey player right but we can touch on the the character side of things developing that team culture right you, you can use technology to help promote and develop that so hopefully some key takeaways for you guys, like um, technology can help coaches improve team and, and obviously athlete, athletic performance. Um, you're looking for patterns. What happens quite often with your team, right? Are we, are we fixing the problem or are we just putting a Band-Aid solution on it? Facilitate communica communication between athletes and coaches. This is paramount. You need to be discussing with your players and you know, that Google sheet that I got with, uh, got from was from Mark Crawford, right? Making sure that you're connecting with every single player so that you're staying on top of things, right? Like imagine you go two, three months or not months, weeks without talking with one player, right? They're going to have, a, there's going to be a breakdown somewhere. There's going to be some conflict. So again, it's staying on top of things. Using video to capture uh, the game, right? We need to be watching it. We need to be assessing it. We need to have that analytical eye and remove as many biases as we can and just watch the game and see exactly what's happening, right? Because again, we see a different vantage point from the bench. Players have a different vantage point um, from the ice. And so the, the camera gives that um, third view where, where it's, it's objective. So when we're watching it with the players, it's like, okay, so we're both watching it from the same standpoint. And now we can have a, a deeper conversation of what's actually happening. So um i'll leave it with that we'll um open it up to questions there patty hopefully enough to kind of spur some just some discussion there but uh, again thanks for helping me out and a big shout out to my wife for helping me with this she's pretty good at the uh, marketing side of things so gotta gotta get that one in. yes thank you my friend uh, we got one sitting in the question and answer and and right before i uh bring it up just want to say thank you very much for taking the time tonight to do this for us, uh, you know, obviously much appreciated. Um, 
just want to maybe start with one myself, if you don't mind. I had one written down. Uh, so I'll throw it out there as I start to read through the uh, the question and answers here. But uh, do you guys ever send video clips of your play, like of the players, to the players, sorry, uh, of the, the game? So, like, you know, you've mentioned Steva and Instat and, and VidSwap. Do you ever send those clips to the players first for them to debrief? themselves yeah, i mean the um all our players have access there's there's obviously a coach feature and a player feature on bit swap so all the players are uploaded with their school email so they can access all the games um that we upload we also can create highlights and and um what's the other one? um reels so it's kind of um, we do send it out, especially like, you know, we want to pick their brain so we can, we can add questions to them and be like, Hey, what do you see? What are three things that you notice about this shift? Right. And just kind of engage in some conversations, but yeah, we definitely send it out so that the players can see it. We don't want to bombard them. We don't want to ambush them. So again, if it's, um, a touchy one, it's just kind of like, Hey, we need to touch base and you kind of preempt them. Like, again, it's like, you know, when you get, we need to talk kind of conversation from either a boss or a colleague. And it's just like, Oh shoot, what, what's going on. And, you know, we kind of put the, the defensive mode on. So it's, again, it's just kind of diffuse that and be like, no, like we just gotta, we gotta touch base, make sure we're on the same page. There's some things that I noticed and I want to get your take on it, whatever it is. Um, sometimes you have to be a little bit more forceful with guys, but I mean, they're smart hockey players. Like they, I mean, they're going to push back. They're, they're, they're young men. Right. So, if you don't have your why and if you don't have um, good information to share for them, they're going to, it's not going to be a very good conversation. Right. So again, you have to make sure that you have your points, you support your points and, and go from there in terms of sharing video with players. Excellent. All right. The first question from the, uh, the question panel here, any thoughts on coaches using parents to help with game or practice video? Is it worth it or who would you use if parents wanted to do it? Um, I mean, I, in the past I've used parents to, to grab video and um, I didn't have any issues with it. It was great for us to get, like, even for us, like we videotape our practices. We like to have a drill inventory um, again, so that we can show players exactly what we're looking for. And even just assess, like we put a lot of emphasis on, on, on the game breakdown, but it also is a practice breakdown. Um, you know, even the, uh, our conversations in the off season, we wanted to get better as a practice team. We wanted to be more game-like and we wanted to be better executed so that, you know, we did have a good year, but we're still a couple steps away. So we want to, you know, really focus on that. So I think from a, from a parent standpoint, um, I think getting them involved and having them as stakeholders is important. We sometimes try and, push them as far away as possible, but sometimes they're eager and they're, they're willing to help out. And it might be a good way for them to see the game from a different perspective. Maybe they turn, pick up a whistle and start coaching. And so uh, you can't have too many, um, I mean, you can't, you don't, you don't want to turn away good people. So I think that's, I'll, I'll leave it at that, where if they're good people and they have the right um, mindset, uh, why not, right? Get them involved so that again, as a coach, you can, I think that's a big thing too, is evaluating our practices. And like I said before, making sure that what we are practicing is transferring into a game situation that the players and our teams are getting better. Excellent. All right, the next one. Uh, what was the biggest challenge you faced when you first started to tag games? Uh, you know, let, let's say you're using Steva and you're using all the tags that come in within that program. What was that biggest challenge and what's the biggest difference to you, uh, I guess, from analyzing video versus live to post game? So, I, yeah, the biggest one was memorizing the key codes. Right? <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're, you're, you're hitting them and things are going off and sometimes you forget to, you know, like power play, you can keep open and then, but then you have to close it and same with ozone time because it just keeps running and running and running. So I think just getting used to it and, and since using Steva, I've also used Puddle, I've used Crossover, I've used, oh man, like there's VidSwap, Hockey TV had its own tagging features, right? So um, there's always a learning process to anything, but I think that's it, is just getting used to the keys and in, in, in breaking it down. And 
you know, like even just the speed, sometimes you catch yourself watching the game and forgetting about coding the, the, the clips. Um, even, even if you don't have a camera operator, uh, sometimes you have to do it both at the same time. So um, I remember uh, one of our exhibition games against uh, um, Team Canada, the, uh, I was talking with their video guy and I was kind of boasting about myself. I'm like, oh, I'm getting up to 300. Um, events in a period he's like I'm already at a thousand I'm like oh man <laughs> this guy's good so I just kind of picked his brain and what he was doing and he was doing shifts by each each player uh, like deflections block shots missed shots like it was amazing like the, the amount of information but sometimes it's too much like you don't really need a lot um, you don't have to you don't have to drown yourself in the information right but it is good to have um, I mean, kind of looking at what you want, like, tie it back into your game objectives, right? So, you know, for us, scoring chance is a big one. So we have to have our scoring chances available so that we can watch those. Um, power play and PK, right? Our discipline. So we'll tag our infractions and see is like, is that a retaliatory penalty or is that a hard working penalty? Um, or, you know, re, um, rewind it back and be like, hey, why are you out of position? Because you're, you being out of position, making a bad read leads to this. We, you know, again, we have to tighten that up. So uh, it does give context to to what we're doing. So um, what was the next part of that question? Sorry. So the 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 biggest difference between watching or or say analyzing the video while you're doing it live uh, versus say sitting down with a computer after the game, post game, with the you know the ability to have maybe not as much stimulus around you. Yeah, I think the. The post is awesome because you get to pause, rewind, reflect, rewatch, right? And so you can see things differently. You can slow things down. Uh, you get more information in the picture. So the it kind of passes your eyeball test. So I think live, uh, like the more you see and the more you kind of understand the way you're supposed to play, you pick up those things. It's like, oh, that guy's not supposed to be where he is, or oh, we missed this pass, or you know, we're getting bombarded here. Right, we got to make an adjustment there, and so you're making the kind of those game adjustments in real time. But then, when you watch it a second time or a third time, um, you're you're breaking more things down in terms of okay, trying to you know think about the thought process. Why are we making this decision? Right? Why are, why are we why are we disconnected on our on our systems play? Right? Why aren't we predictable to each other right now? And so again, it kind of just like gives you an opportunity to kind of digest and, and, and ask those questions. Beautiful. You kind of almost answered a little bit of this question, uh, you know, via that, that last one. And in terms of how much is too much with video and analytics, um, but, you know, so, so the question is, how much is too much with video and analytics? When you have team meetings, does video take up most of the time in discussion? So we keep it. We, we stick to um, basically like three categories, right? Like it, 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 we can't go too long. Like these guys are going to be like, I've been on um, staffs where it's an like, or even hearing as a mentor, we're going to do video and we're going to do, we're going to watch the entire game. It's like, you, you can't watch the entire game with the whole team. It, it, guys are going to get exhausted. They're going to yawn. They're, they're, you lose, you lose what video is supposed to be for. And it, it's it's reinforcing the, the things that you're already saying. You're putting um, images and 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 pictures to to what you're saying, right? So um, I would recommend like stick to three things if you want to work on your D zone and you want to work on your breakouts. Like those are those are kind of connected, right? And so show three to five clips move on to the next thing. So three to five clips, move on to the next thing. So even the videos that I was gonna show, um, one was, um, uh, like I said, I, I work on zone entry, I like zone entries and exits a lot. So it was a zone entry clip and all the things like, you know, how did we generate offense? And then we finished with goals so that they feel good about it. But it's like, it was like a minute long. They don't have a lot of time. Um, you want to keep them engaged. You want to add to their stimulus. So we can sometimes overload them and drown them in information and they're going to get bored and make sure that it is in, um, it's, it's categorized properly. You're not bouncing around. Oh, here's a breakout clip. Oh, here's an ozone clip. Oh, here's a power play clip. Oh, here's another D zone clip. Here's another breakout clip. Keep them together so that you can build, um, 
some, um, you know, they can they can they understand it a little bit better right they can connect the dots a little bit more yeah yeah and i think you kind of almost went into that second part of this this question is what would you look at the most say special teams five five v five uh you know scoring those types of things um again yeah i think you kind of went into that answer so so maybe i'll, I'll take that question and i might even go in the next step is you're, are you looking for video clips that would say go along with certain things that you as a staff, your team might be struggling with and or, you know, things that might not be fitting into your team, uh, you know, say call it values or beliefs or, the, you know, the, the process of how you want to play? Um, so how much time are we spending on those ones? Yeah, or what would you look at the most? I mean, if, if you're, so if I, if, if let's give you an example, maybe, you know, maybe some good dialogue here is, uh, so we're struggling in the the offensive zone, but we have a team identity and, and I'm looking at those videos. How, how much clips would you show to say, you know, let's say the Cougar versus non-Cougar hockey, would you show that more versus special teams? Uh, I think it's, yeah, I, I guess it, it depends on, what breakdowns we have, but we do show a lot of special teams. And special teams are kind of the um, the Thursday, Friday meetings, right? And so Tuesday is kind of like, so we like to pressure on the puck. We want to play a, a fast paced game. So if we see clips where guys are coasting, they're on their, right, they're on their straight edge and they're, they're not engaging on the puck, we need to show those ones because that's not our identity, right? So that's kind of one where, you know, we want, we want to, um, you know, get off line changes. We weren't very good on line changes. So those were a lot of the cougar hockey ones where, you know, if you're, you know, you can't send everyone. So again, just like a little bit of those details, but power play is big, um, especially when we don't get that many power play opportunities, you have to definitely have to take advantage of them. So finding tweets here and there and breakdowns and, you know, it's, it's high level hockey you guys are making adjustments. So um, for our level, it's, it's definitely, um, an important part and so i guess their values are the same like all of this is the same and i guess using the, the weekend i see steve's question about um you know that was for a college schedule how much can we use for a kid um a u16 u18 it's tough because of work and, and other commitments and stuff but even finding ways just to find different clips to send guys and, and using their phones it doesn't always have to be at the rink right a lot of times there isn't access to video so we're trying to do it in the dressing room right after practice and then, you know, some guys want to shower, some guys want to stay in their hockey gear and you know, the, the heat from the, the shower, it makes everything, everyone's so groggy and tired. So are you really getting the most out of it? So again, picking your spots and creating the environment so that it is, and that's what I showed the, um, the Minnesota golden Gophers. right? It's a stadium seating, their leather chairs, they're nice. It's kind of like, you're going to be comfortable and you're going to watch and we're going to watch it with purpose. So I think to Steve's question, I think a routine is important right? and find out what, what you value as a coach. What do you want to communicate with the players, right? Is that that one player that has been struggling with a few things and you find a great clip of him executing and doing it. Well, you want to reinforce that. You want to send it to them. Like some job, this is what, this is what we've been talking about. This is all that, you know, when you were really frustrated, you finally broke through, let's see more of this or, you know, same thing. Like, so, you know, when I was U18, we would do a lot of that and, um, we had crossover, we invested in, we were one of the only ones in the association, our teams in the association to use it. But, you know, again, you, you just got to find the time. You, I mean, it's for the kids, it's for your development. Um, break it up with the coaches. One coach watches the first period, one coach watches the second period, third period, if not. And if you can't um, break them down into specific events and categories like a zone entry or a breakout or a power play, just kind of get guys to watch and take notes and, and share the notes and then find out what, what's important and, you know, find the clips that you can, you can send out to them. But I think it's, an, it's valuable. It's a good way of debriefing. So with, with the most teams playing on weekends, right. Next time you're at the rink, go over your game objectives, go over some of the clips that, you know, stood out to you. And then, you know, if you don't have any other time to do any video, Kind of look ahead to the other team and kind of things that you want to focus on going into the next game. Beautiful. All right, I, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you here. I'm gonna go to the the next question before I come back to maybe the last uh, before I go to the last one here. But 
and again, I think you kind of touch on a little bit, but you know, how long in terms of minutes would you maybe make a typical video session and would you, you know, limit that to a certain number of clips? Yeah. So they're basically like 15 minutes, um, 15 minutes to 20 minutes. Um, it, they don't take a lot of time. Um, a lot of the work goes in behind the scenes, right? So, you know, we're getting uh, however many breakouts in a, in, in, a, in a game. And so we're trying to find the ones that uh, are the best ones to show, positive, negative, right? You know, do, we, do we have our slash support? Do we have our centerman in the pocket, right? Um, do we hit the weak side defenseman, whatever, right? And so again, we're, we're keeping those short, um, 15, 20 minutes, and then, uh, the guys are busy. They want to get on the ice. They want to they want to do some things. Um, you know, again on the Tuesdays, right? It's an optional skate most days. So guys are coming in and they have to get to class or they're coming from class. So we have to be flexible with their schedule. So um, it's it's you know yeah we're not in there for an, an hour, right? We might we might use like uh, Bert loves the Kansas City Chiefs, so he uses a lot of Kansas City videos. He loves Mahomes and he uses some of the leadership qualities from him. And so he ties those into you know, what does it mean? Like, how does it relate to us or how does it relate to you? So uh, the tactical stuff might be about 15, 20 minutes and then there's about a five minute clip on on life skills or something else. Beauty. All right, and the last one here. So, you know, having coached minor hockey, in your opinion, when do you think is the best time to introduce video to the players? Maybe at what age? I, I think it depends on the group. Um, but I think I think now is the time to start introducing it, right? Especially now with the pandemic and how kids are learning and what resources teachers are using. I think it's beneficial just to, you know, if, if you have a kid that's in school asking their teacher, how do you teach these or what technologies are you using? I think it's so valuable because they're essentially the experts in teaching and coaching is teaching. So let's ask them on what they're using. There's obviously some um, negative side effects of it, but if we're using it in a positive way and trying to help the kids learn and get developed and get better, I think we can use them, especially in practices where maybe we don't feel as comfortable demoing a drill. So you can pull the drill up and okay, hey, this is what it's supposed to look like, right? This is where we're at. Let's kind of fill in the blanks and you're giving them the opportunity to figure it out, but they know, kind of know where that end goal is. Kind of like when Sveshnikov did the lacrosse move and everyone was trying it and you know like there's a good opportunity okay there's the outcome but we got to work on a few different things to get there and, or can we turn that into a competition so that you know maybe it's a little bit more productive but I think um, I think it's valuable to, to share video and use the technology to their advances uh, uh, to their advantages um, we're dealing with uh, well millennials I guess or what's the next generation um, they're growing up with social media and everything that it entails um, and kind of embracing that and meeting them in the middle um, will help with us staying current and and using the using the devices and the technology to our advantage and as a benefit versus a detriment. Excellent. All right. Well, Alex, on behalf of Hockey Alberta, I'd like to, you know, thank you again for, for joining us tonight. Uh, fantastic presentation. Always wonderful catching up with you, my friend. Uh, to everybody on the call tonight, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, you know, can't uh, speak enough to you guys as coaches and, and the role you guys play within our game within the province. So uh, a massive thank you to everybody tonight. And, and again, Alex, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, tonight to, to join us. So thank you so much. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Hockey Alberta. Appreciate it. Good luck, coaches. Have fun this year. Hopefully uh, some more wins and losses, and we'll see you around the rinks.